Chapter 19. Chapter 19 is going to finish off the sort of introduction that chapter 18 brings in because the ultimate answer for what we're going to speak about is really going to come at the end of 25. It's all lead up what we're doing here. This is specifically, officially, the short long way that we're going through right now. Because the long way, which is the long short way, involves very deep and complex intellectual contemplation and meditation. We think, I learned something for a few hours. Boom! So there! It is, no, that's not the intellectual capacities we're dealing with. We're dealing with an intellectual capacity that can actually give birth to a very deep, strong emotion. It's also going to be a lasting emotion that then compels us and impels us to do what we got to do. Sit long enough and intellectualize long enough, create a love slash fear of God that will always keep us on the right track. That's the long short way for Bainini because the intellectual levels that's required are long and arduous. But the result of them, these emotions that are created will then lead to the right sort of action. So that's how it becomes a long short way. This is a short long way because what we're doing is we're tapping into what's called this Alba Mesoteris, the hidden love that we have. So we're working off of pilot light. We just have to figure out how to tap into it. The kind of intellectual process that we're going to use for it, it's not going to be as arduous as the long short way. So that's why this is called a short long way because the Alba Mesoteris is already there. We just have to get it and find it. How do we know that we have it? Where does it come from? Etc. Etc. Number one, this is, it's a Yerusha from the Avos. As in, we've inherited it and a person doesn't need to do anything to inherit. All they have to do is be born basically with the right name or DNA. You just have to be born to the right family and boom, you're now eligible for inheritance. It's not something that, that you're supposed to earn. There's no gift. There's no exchange. That's the inheritance aspect of it. The second thing, which we got pretty cut up on last time, is that where is it found? This Ava Mesoteris is in Chachma. Why Chachma? Chachma is a place without ego. That moment when you're open to an idea, it's a time when your own self has been set aside. That is why the Ava Mesoteris is there because it is something that it cannot be affected by other forces. Not by our own actions and not by negative forces in the world. It doesn't get tainted. It doesn't get burned up. It doesn't get put out. Why can't the other forces go to Chachma? Well, because Chachma is a place without ego. And by definition, Klipa Sitracha have ego, they have a sense of self. That's part of what makes them what they are. And that's why they can't enter the realm of Chachma. Chachma is totally given over. There's no ego there. Now we go to this Pasuk from Mishlei. The soul of man is a candle of God. What do we mean? So it's not just like, oh, the soul is a bright, burning, fiery flame. Here what we're looking at when we say that the soul of man is a candle of God, we're talking about what is the nature of fire. Fire always flames upward. You hold your candle upside down, the fire will go up sideways it will go up. They explain that the reason why it goes upwards is because it's trying to reconnect its source. Where's the source of fire? Well when you look at the four elements, earth, water, air, and fire, earth is the heaviest of all the elements. That's why it goes downward. That's why things like laziness and oppression or sadness are compared to earth. They drag you down. Really the entire world should be submerged in water. Part of what occurred at creation is that the allowance that was made was that the water parted for earth to come up. Because earth is the more dense and the least refined of all the elements, it is the heaviest. It sinks. Water is a little bit more refined, so that's why it's above earth. Above that, we have air. We know that the air is above water. And then above all that, this says it's the sublunar sphere. Above all that is fire. If someone t shoots out a rocket ship, part of the problem that they have is that they don't burn up on exit or upon entry. By its very nature, the fire wants to reconnect to its source. It wants to go back to where the source of the element of fire is in the physical realms. That's one aspect of fire. The emphasis that we have here on the word nature is that we're using the word nature to explain things that we don't necessarily understand it. It makes no sense for fire to want to reconnect to its source. If a flame goes back into the fire, it's not a flame anymore. It becomes part of the fire. If you take a match and you throw it into a bonfire, you're not going Where'd my flame go? There is no more flame anymore. There is only bonfire. And still the flame wants to go back to the source. It will be extinguished if it goes back to the source. Not only will it be extinguished, it's not going to exist anymore as an independent entity. It's just going to be back part of the fire. There is no separation of flames within the fire. So that's why, again, the author emphasizes this is part of the nature of fire. There's no logical explanation for this. Not because it's below logic, but because it's something that's above logic. It's super rational. It's above the rational thought of why would something want to go back to its source if it means that it's going to cease to exist. And yet this is the nature of fire. And we look again, the line from Mishlei, the soul of man is a candle of God. Nerisham nitras adam. The soul, and here we're specifically going to speak about the Alpha Mesoteris, has the same nature. The nature of this hidden love that is within us, as in the stirring that we have going on within us, deep down within us, there is a part of us, that pilot light wants to be reunited with its source. The soul wants to go back. Here specifically we speak about the Nefshel kids. The soul wants to go back to its source. It doesn't want to be here. Even though if it goes back to the source, it just becomes part of the godness. Not only does it become part of the godness, but there is no separate soul anymore within the godness. Rays of the sun. If you follow ray of the sun back into the sun, you know, where'd the ray go? There is no more ray. There is only sun. And yet this is the nature of this. Emphasizing this word nature because it's not something that we understand necessarily. 
The irony is that when we look at the world today and we describe things as nature, those are things that we much more easily accept. And also when it comes to things that are not natural, like what's going on here? Why does everything about nature make so much more sense? It's just because there's a repeated pattern that we find comfort in repeated patterns. It makes sense to you? Oh, of course I would have created rocks to stand like this. Oh, of course I would. What do you mean of course that makes sense? Who said a rock is supposed to do that? Why should water flow? Why should any of that make sense? It makes sense because that's what we've always seen. But who decided that water should flow? Why does a waterfall make sense? Well, because all the waters fall. Because there's gravity. Well, who said gravity should act like that? People are just like, oh, why does gravity act like that? But no one's asking the question of why is there gravity? It's nature. So we're like, oh, it's nature. That's how it goes. It's not that in nature makes any more sense. It's just because we become used to patterns that we can write off as nature. We're not bothered by it as much as things that seem unnatural to us. Why is that unnatural any more, any different than the natural? Just because it's not the pattern. So again, when you say, well, why does it want to flame upward? Because this is part of the nature of it. Try to break it down as much as you want. You're not going to ultimately find the answer of why does fire want to go upward? The answer is because it wants to return to its source. Yes, but why does it want to return to its source? Because that's the nature of fire. Why? 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 Well, you could end up in a whole circle and you're not going to, whatever. It's the nature. This is what it is. The same thing is that is the nature of the hidden love that's within the Jewish soul. Ultimately, every Jew has this stirrings inside of them. It is within our very nature to want to flame upward, basically. And so now what we're trying to figure out in the short, long way is that how do we tap into that? How do we uncover this desire and this longing to unite with the source, to reconnect? Now we're going back to this whole thing about it being in Chachma. Why? Going back to the nature of the source. They made that Chachma is above the rest of intellect. This is located in Chachma, which is above intellect. It's that level of faith that goes beyond intellect. You're supposed to understand as much as you can. And you have faith along the way. Then there's a faith that we reach once we've maximized our own intellects. This is a rule of everything that's on the side of Kedusha. That's of Kedusha. That it specifically it is something that comes from Chachma. Again, why Chachma? Because Chachma is a place without ego. We did this all last time. The definition of something that is holy is something without ego. It is something that is submissive and given over to godliness. And the more of a self we are, the more of an I am we are, the less we are submissive and just given over to godliness. Because there's myself that I have to take care of, aside from everything else. This is a little bit of a sidetrack, but sort of fish connected. I don't remember the beginning of it, so I remember who said it. But basically all your actions should be for the sake of heaven. The commentary on that, I think it's for the Rebbe, was contrasting that with In all your ways you should know. What's the difference between those two? All that you do should be for the sake of heaven means that going to work right now because ultimately we're going to get money, we're going to provide, I'm going to give tzedakah, etc. So I'm involved in these physical actions, but ultimately these physical actions are going to be used for holy purposes. Obviously, that's a good thing. Of course, it's a good thing. Behold your and all your ways you know is that even this physical action that I'm doing, it's not just a means to an end. The physical action itself can be something that's elevated. This physical action itself, I can know him even within this physical action that I'm doing. In my work, I bring God into the work, etc. Going back to this, so Chachma is above the rest. It's above Bina and Das, which is why this is a place that's considered a place of Kedusha. Now, what happens with most people, though we can't feel it, and that we don't sense this Ava Mesoteris? That's why it's called the hidden love. Why? Because it's tucked away deep inside of us. And for a lot of us that we don't have easy access to this, again, that's why it's called the hidden love. Especially someone who's a Russia and someone who's controlled by their heart. That means that this Ava, tucked away in their Chachma, is basically gone into exile. Someone who their hearts are ruling over them and it's not their minds ruling over them, this Ava gets kind of tucked away. It gets put on the back burner. It's like it's an exile. It's not in control. That's why it's called an Ava Mesoteris. It's called a hidden love. If not, it would be a revealed love and they wouldn't be ruled by their hearts in that regard. But instead they are. Deep down within the Nefshel Kiss, it's in the Chachma of Nefshel Kiss and it's flaming. It wants to be uncovered and wants to be allowed to, to be the pilot light for the fire of love, etc. for God. But instead, because people dealing with day-to-day -day life or people who transgress or they give into indulgences, through doing that, they're covering over, making it harder to access the Ava Mesoteris. So it's going deeper into hiding almost. Or becomes more and more hidden. That's why also we have we've had this for in Adam over there, Alan Kane Nukras Borachtos. But a person doesn't sin unless a spirit of folly enters him. The spirit of folly enters him when that love is being obscured. When you have so much love or devotion for someone and someone's like, let's do something they don't like, you're like, no, I'm not gonna do that. It's not even an option. I will not do that. The other way you could do that is if at that moment, act contrary to the will of somebody who you have deep regard for, is if that deep regard, the love, is not being felt. It's not manifesting in that moment. And how does that happen? Something has to obscure it. So that's the rosh dust that comes over a person. It says like, no, 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 it's okay, it's fine. You're like, but I really love them. And you're like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Give in, give in. The rosh dust allows actions that would further cover over the love. What's key is that it doesn't put out or extinguish the love. It covers it. It puts it more into exile. 
if someone falls into a bad habit, it gets harder and harder to break the habit. So, oh, I'm only gonna do it one more time. I'm only gonna do it one more time. Every time it's only one more time, it gets harder to break the habit. Or think about any time that you've done something that you know you shouldn't do. Even if we're not even specifically talking about like sin or something like that. What let you cross that line? I'm not really that kind of person, but I was in a bad mood. They put me in a bad mood. They said something and they deserved it. We were all going crazy. We were drinking. Whatever excuse you have, or even I have no excuse, but then you're apathetic then. Any of these things would fall under this rush just that we're talking about. Foreign influence that comes over someone and allows you to basically do something that you know you shouldn't be doing right now. Anything from an indulgence to transgression or anything in between. And it could be done from anger, it could be done from an emotion, it could also be done from apathy. It could be done from any of it because any of that lets you cross the line. It could just be inattentiveness. Like, you know, like you try not to yell at kids sometimes if they spill something. You don't have to freak out every time. Kids will spill. That happens. But what if they spill something because they're holding something and they're holding it like sideways? I told you not to hold it like that. Well, then you get a little bit more upset because they're being inattentive. Not because they're a kid who spills, but because just pay attention. How many times have you said that? All you have to do is pay attention. So you have that also. Any of these things, the apathy, the inattentiveness, or the negative emotions. Any of those things can lead to a certain behavior. Also, that goes back to six, seven, and eight. We don't automatically just indulge in these behaviors. We automatically, oh, look at that. Part of a and all that stuff is say no. Say no to, oh, look at that, don't go there. But when we do know better, why do we go there when we do know better? Because something has to come over us. There's not, we're gonna see something physically come over us, but there's a sense that comes over us that somehow dims the resistance to it, whenever one of these ways. So when that occurs, the Ava Mesoteris is not put out. The pilot light does not go out. When I was with Trevor Warren, he was comparing it to Flintstone, not a yabba dabba doo Flintstone. A flint rock, you gotta strike so you light the fire. That could be submersion water for years and years and years. And if you pull it out, you could strike it and you'll get fire. Because that potential for fire is always within there. And you just have to know how to strike it right and you'll get a flame from it. Sort of like that is the Ava Mesoteris. It's always there. It always has the capacity to flame up. Because we live in a physical world with physical material desires. Each time we're going to give it to the physical material desires and indulgences, whatever it's going to be, however innocent they are, it just makes it harder to access it. But it doesn't go anywhere. It just develops a longer reach for basically. But it's still there. That's why we have Vigas Kiyash and Hashem. Then the Lord awakens as one out of sleep. Because the hidden love is asleep until a person undergoes a test of faith, which is above intellect and chachma, whereby it awakens and overcomes klipas and desires for permitted and forbidden indulgences, even to the point of mysterious message. Basically, for most people, if they can't figure out how to access it on their own, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's like it's sleeping. When someone's sleeping, you're like, oh, they're not a great artist anymore because they're sleeping. No, they're still a great artist. They're just sleeping right now. So their powers of artistic expression are also sleeping right now. They haven't gone anywhere. Everything's just sleeping. As soon as you wake them up, it's all going to be in there and it's all going to be able to manifest and you'll be able to see all the great things that they can do. For a person, you could say specifically for a Russia, but for people who do not usually tap into this, this Avamus Territ is asleep, it's slumbering inside of us. And it's just waiting for the wake up moment. For a person who does not specifically know how to wake it up without the spiritual crises that might occur, there is a spiritual crisis that can occur. And when that occurs, this light, it flames up. It's so bright, it can overcome everything. Anything from a permitted indulgence to anything that's forbidden, any of the negative forces, even to the point of Mr. Snefish. Meaning that even someone who's not a great tzaddik, which we kind of went through last time, even someone who's a, who's a simple person, a simple Jew, an unlearned Jew, someone who might be considered a sinner, any of these kinds of people, they can still reach a level of mysterious nefesh. Why? Because at that moment, this Ava Mysterious flames up. The light of it is so bright, it doesn't even have to make sense about why am I making this decision. A person could not have lived Jewish a day in their life. And you know, when someone says denounce your Judaism, they're like, no, don't tell me what to do. I'm not going to do that. Where does that come from? How do they have that if they never gave anything to Judaism their whole life? They never invested in their Judaism. They never developed the Judaism. Where does that come from? So the Algebra says it comes from the Alvin Mesoteris. So we're using an extreme example now, which punchline of 25 is like, you don't have to wait for the extreme moment to tap into it. Thank God if you're only faced with something small, you don't have to give up your life for it. So why should it be so hard then to have to do the small thing? If we all know that in a moment of crisis, God forbid, a spiritual crisis, God forbid, we'd all have a moment of Mesir Snefesh because of this Alvin Mesoteris. It's going to flame up bright shiny light that's going to illuminate everything. We will not renounce the announcer Jews and we will stand up behind that in us. So we don't have to wait for the moment of crisis to say, I'm going to do this because I'm a Jewish person and this is how we behave. That's the punch out of 25. So now you got spoiler alert sneak peek for the end of that. That's what this is all leading to. Here that we're still talking about the very nature of it. This is part of the very nature of it, that it's there and it's dormant. It's waiting. All the features are in place and all the characteristics of it, the nature of it is all in place. It's waiting for us to let it shine. Part of this Ava Mysteris that we have, what's part of the nature of it, that this great love that, that can be flamed up? There's a fear that's contained within this love. First of all, when we say, oh, you have an Ava Mysteris, know that, yes, it contains fear also. 
know that Ava and Yara are very important. We've kind of introduced that in chapter four, and we're going to get back to that in very, very much depth and detail much later on. We know that Ava and Yara are very important for our Votus Shem and for our self-refinement. Because I love you so much, I want to do for you, and I have a fear of you that I don't want to mess things up. So within this hidden love, we have fear also. The natural love found in the godly soul intrinsically desires to reunite with its origin and its source. It instinctively recoils from touching even the fringe of impurity, even only with the outer garments. This love of God inherent in it is a fear also. What is that fear? The love is desire for connection. I love God. I want to unite with him. I want to connect with him. I want to do the things he likes. I want to spend time with him. You love someone, you want to connect with them. This hidden love if we could bring it to be a revealed love and not concealed, we could figure out how to tap into it. It's going to drive our desire for connection. At the same time, within the nature of this hidden love is fear as well. What's the fear? It's a dread of separation. I don't want, not even with my machshava dibur maisa, the outer garments. That's not my soul. That's not my soul's essence. It's only a thought. It's not hurting anyone. But I talk about other people. I talk about you. You hurt your connection with your thought of sin and desire or whatever. You got to shut it down. Thought, speech, action. That's really more removed. That's really more outer, right? Because the more physical is the more outer of spirituality. And even with that, this love, the fear that's within it, it's going to recoil even from a suggestion of that. Part of the nature of it, the advantage of it, is that it's not just a love of God, desire for connection, but there's a fear also, a restraint, because I don't want to be separated from him by doing what he doesn't want. That's basically chapter 19.